Welcome back. It's great to see you now after five days again. And so how did you go with all the devices and downloading everything? Thanks, Nicole. I went went fine. So I swallowed five capsules and I wore the gear and we've got a lot of data from all of that and uh, that we've put that together in this report. The top trace is direct core temperature measurements from the capsule. It shows core temperature going up and down quite a lot. Um, I rode my bike a couple of times and so there's some really big spikes in temperature up to about 38 degrees, which is pretty normal if you exercise hard. And the next trace down is skin temperature measurements from the eye buttons from different parts of my body. I had one on my calf, one on my chest, and you can see temperature goes up and down across each day and night quite markedly in those signals. Uh, the next one down is heart rate, and then the bottom traces a movement from the chest device and that's very useful for telling when someone's lying down and gone to gone to bed and what body positions they're in and also activity and then all of that data put together is basically in that fourth trace down which is the most useful trace where we're trying to extract uh, the circadian fluctuations in core temperature from all of those other sleep and activity effects on core temperature. So I think if we do focus in on that fourth graph, that will be the best way for us to understand the timing of your body clock. So you can see along the bottom is every day and the time of the day with the gray bars showing nighttime or when you were sleeping. And then along the left hand side, the higher up the line goes in the graph is higher body temperature, core body temperature. So you can see there that the timing of your body clock was pretty consistent across the five days and it was at about 6am was the lowest point in your core body temperature. And so if you remember back to when we met five days earlier, you were saying that for, for most people that timing is before, between 4 and 5am. So your timing is a little bit later maybe than most people, but we see people that have much later timing than you as well. So sometimes up to 8 or 9am. We also see the opposite. So for some people, they're timed really early. And so their core body temperature minimum might be at 2 or 3am. So they're going to bed earlier and waking up earlier. And people who have a later timed body clock, they're going to bed later and also waking up later. But for some people, it can cause difficulties with waking up to make it to school on time or to work. And so, like you said last time, we can change the timing of the body clock using light. And so we have devices like these devices for light therapy, where you can see these shine into your eyes to give your body clock some new cues about the timing. So for people with a late timed body clock, we ask them to wear these glasses from the time that they wake up naturally in the morning for about an hour and shift this time earlier each day a little bit until they're waking up and going to sleep at a time that suits them. And then for individuals who are, have a really early timed body clock, who are going to bed early and also waking up early, we ask them to wear these glasses in the evening uh, before their bedtime and gradually go to bed later across consecutive days until they're sleeping when they'd like to be. Well, it's been really wonderful to talk about the circadian rhythm and ways now that we can measure it really precisely to really understand the timing and inform what we do clinically when people need help with their sleep and the timing of their body clock. Thanks, Nicole. I agree. It's a really active and important area of research for us as a group to try and come up with better physiology grounder techniques for tracking the daily core temperature minimum time with physiological recordings so that we can help you do um, better clinical practice and treatment of patients with sleep problems. Thank you, Peter. Thanks. Thanks.